Okay, welcome to 8.1, finding the measure <clears throat> of angles in polygons. Remember that poly means many, and gone is a um, side, <clears throat> is another form, kind of, kind of like lateral, another um, stem, I think you'd call it, <clears throat> for that represents a side. So our, our uh, essential question here, as we turn the objective into an essential question, is how do I find angle measures in polygons? So a diagonal <clears throat> of a polygon is a segment that joins two non-consecutive vertices. So remember vertices are, let's go ahead and label that. <clears throat> vertices are, well, hold on, <laughs> I already have it uh, labeled. Or vertex, let's do that way. <clears throat> let's label one of these is a vertex. And then more than one, the plural of vertex is vertices. <clears throat> and consecutive vertices are ones that are uh, beside each other. You might say adjacent, but we'll use the word consecutive because uh, like adjacent would be these two angles are adjacent to each other. They're right beside each other consecutive uh, vertices would be uh, a better term for uh, describing uh, these vertices. So a diagonal goes between two non-consecutive vertices. So we start from this vertex and go over to this non-consecutive uh, vertex and that is one diagonal. Here's another and so we can draw uh, three uh, diagonals. And yes, there are other diagonals that we could draw uh, in this. But the reason we're doing this, we want to figure out the sum. <clears throat> Let's look at this guy. We want to figure out the sum of the interior angles of this polygon. And you will remember that in a triangle, the sum of the interior angles is 180 degrees. And so I can break this, this uh, polygon, the interior angles of this polygon, up into, or using these three triangles. So this one interior angle is broken up into these three here. And this is into two, and this is into two. And so I know that the, interior, the sum of the interior angles of this triangle is 180 degrees. The sum of the interior angles of this triangle is also 180 degrees, and same thing with this two. So I have <clears throat> three 180 degree uh, measures, and so you add three, uh, or add 180 plus 180 plus 180, and you get 540. And so remember our expression for that <clears throat> is n minus two times 180, where n is the number of sides. So here in this polygon, we had five sides. And so you subtract two from five and you get three. And that's how you find the number of triangles. There are three triangles there. And then take that three, multiply it times 180, and you get 540. And that will always work for the sum of the interior angles of a, of a polygon. And so remember again that n equals the number of sides, but also equals the number of interior angles. So for example here, uh, this uh, polygon has six sides and there are six interior angles. So n is either the number of, si number of sides, uh, which is also the number of interior angles. <clears throat> so let me do one of these examples here in the textbook to get you ready for the one that you have in your notes. And they tell us here that this guy is an octagon. I could have figured that out myself. One, two. Remember, when you start, start in one particular place. Maybe put your finger there because I've messed up before and counted the same side more than once. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight sides is an octagon. And they want us to find the sum of the interior angles of, a, uh, of this here um, polygon. And hey, wait, wait a second. I forgot that in our definition, uh, in order for this uh, to work, it has to be convex. 
has to be convex, meaning that each of these vertices are pointing out. It cannot be concave. Remember, concave is when it points in. So, so for example, this polygon here is concave. These vertices, these two vertices happen to be pointing in. Here's another concave uh, polygon where one of the vertices is poking in. And concave is in contrast to convex, where each of the vertices are pointing out. So in order for this expression to work for the sum of the interior angles uh, of a polygon, it has to be a convex polygon. Okay, so back to here. This is an octagon, and it is, it is a convex octagon. So we use our expression and plug in 8 for the number of sides, which is also the number of angles, and we get 1080. So go ahead and pause the video, and you are ready now to do question number one on your notes. Now let's look at example two. <clears throat> And in this particular case, they are telling us that whatever this polygon is, the sum of the interior angles is 900 degrees. And they want us to figure out how many sides this polygon has. So we use our expression. This is expression for the sum of the interior angles of any polygon, as long as, I shouldn't say any, as long as that polygon is a convex polygon, right? But it does not have to be a regular polygon, as we will talk about later. And they're telling us that it equals, the sum is 900 uh, degrees, so set those two equal to each other and use this as a algebraic equation. You divide both sides by 180, and then add 2 to both sides, and you get n in equals 7. So that is a a uh, heptagon <clears throat> with uh, seven sides on that. So you are ready now to do question number two, where the sum of the measures of the interior angles of a convex, they got that right, included that, convex polygon is 1,440. So take that expression there and set that equal to 1,440, and then solve for in, just like we did here in this problem. And then let me show you example number three. <clears throat> We're still talking about interior angles, and they want us to find the measure of this interior angle. So I can use my, uh, I could have used the equation here, but what they did is they uh, just said that because this is a quadrilateral, there are four sides here. Uh, therefore, using this expression, n minus two times 180, there are four sides, so 4 minus 2 times 180. 4 minus 2 is 2. 2 times 180 is 360. So that's where they got the 360 from. And then they just add up these interior angles. So they say x plus 108, so they're going clockwise here, uh, plus 121 plus 59. So the sum of these interior angles uh, equals 360 and we know that simply because it is a quadrilateral and then we take this uh, algebraic equation and uh, solve it for x you're combining like terms here and then subtract 288 from both sides and you get x equals 72 so we know for sure that the measure of this angle is uh, 72 degrees ain't that useful it is. It can be useful, especially on a test. <laughs> okay, so you're ready now to do uh, question number three uh, on your notes. And so using this diagram here, <clears throat> they want you to find uh, the measure of angle S, this guy here, and they also want you to find the measure of angle T. And notice that they have single arcs on both of these angles. So what does that tell you? about those two angles. Yes, those two angles are congruent. So let's call this the measure of this angle, uh, x. Let's just pick any old variable, but uh, I'll use x. And so if this, the measure of this angle, angle t, 
is x, then what is the measure of angle s? And you are correct, it is also x. I'm not going to write it because some of you uh, sluggish people, and it wouldn't be you because you're listening to the video, but uh, I've noticed that some people just copy down the notes. So I'm not going to put, I'm not going to put that on the notes there. But you hear me, and you know that x should go right there. And all you have to do is just add these, what are they, one, two, three, four, five together. Add those five together. And so you'd say x plus 93 plus 156 plus 85 plus x equals what? So what does it equal? Well, the last time we used 360. Should I use 360? No way, Jose. This We used 360 when that was a quadrilateral. Is this guy a quadrilateral? No, it's not. It's a pentagon, right? It has five sides to it, five angles. And so therefore, make sure that you figure out using this formula what the sum of the interior angles of a pentagon is. In fact, here it is right there. Uh, that I just figured out for you. N equals five. And so therefore, the sum of the interior angles uh, that any pentagon is going to be 540. Okay, so you got the picture? X plus 93 plus 156 plus 85 plus X equals 540. And then solve that algebraic equation for X. And then number four, uh, the measures of three of the interior angles of a quadrilateral. Okay, so quadrilateral tells us that N uh, equals four. And we know from this guy that uh, when it's a quadrilateral, the sum of the interior angles is gonna be 360. So they want us to find the fourth interior angle. So 89 plus 110 plus uh, 46 plus, you could say X, equals 360 and then solve that equation all right hopefully I'm spoon feeding you well enough on this one it's making sense to you so we have been talking about interior angles right on the inside now we're going to shift <clears throat> and talk about exterior angles so in order to define these exterior angles we need to extend a side out on one side of the side and we call that an auxiliary line auxiliary line so you draw auxiliary lines going around <clears throat> extending beyond the sides <clears throat> and this is <clears throat> an, an exterior angle as opposed to your interior angle there and remember that if I was to start on here and then measure from this ray and the measure of this angle plus the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle three and four and five, how many degrees has my pencil just traveled? It has traveled 360 degrees. So the sum of the exterior angles <clears throat> of any convex, there's that word again, convex, uh, polygon has to be convex. The sum of the exterior angles of any convex polygon will always be 360. So put a circle around that or box, whatever you want to do. And then write the word sum just to, when you see 360, think of the word sum. Same thing over here. When you see uh, n minus 2 times 180, Think of the word sum. Start out with this is the sum of what? This is the sum of the interior angles of a convex polygon. And 360 is the sum of the exterior angles. Okay? And we use the same variable in for the exterior angles. How can we do that? Well, because you remember that the number of sides is also the number of interior angles, which is also the number of exterior angles. So N equals the number of sides, it also equals the number of ex interior angles, it also equals the number of exterior angles. <clears throat> okay, then uh, example number four in your book here. And what do they want us to do? They want us to find what the value of x is here. So these are exterior angles. These are auxiliary lines extending out here. 
And <clears throat> so we could start out and say x plus 2x plus 89 plus 67. Okay, the sum of these exterior angles equals how many degrees? 360. And where do we get that 360? Is that, do we get this 360 from, from doing this, uh, being a quadrilateral? Uh, well, yes, this is a quadrilateral, one, two, three, four, but that is not where we got the 360 from. Remember, the sum of the exterior angles is always 360. Does not matter whether it's a quadrilateral or a pentagon or whatever the thing might be, it will always be uh, 360 is the sum of the exterior angles. Okay, so here's your equation and solve this dude for x by adding like terms there's those terms and then subtracting 156 and then dividing both sides by 3 to get x equals 68 and that is the similar thing of what you're going to be doing here in your notes with uh, number 5 convex hexagon so that's six sides to it has exterior angles with a measure and they one two three four hey wait a second no here, here's five so one two three four five well, wait a second uh, hexagon is six uh, sides so therefore six exterior angles but they only give me five of those and they want us to find the sixth one so you know what to do 34 plus 49 plus 58 plus 67 plus 75 plus x Right, the variable for the sixth vertex equals what? Equals 360. Right, the sum of the exterior angles is always 360, and then solve that equation. And then, please put this on the bottom of your notes there. Let me get this out of the way, make it a little bit easier to see. Um, this, uh, towards the very end of this section, it did talk about, but I want to make sure to emphasize this that regular, we've talked about this in class, a regular polygon means that it's equilateral and also equiangular. So we were talking about irregular, you could say, uh, polygons, but with regular polygon, that tells us a whole lot of information. It's equilateral, means that all the sides are congruent. It's also equiangular, meaning all the angles are congruent. And when that is the case, is the case then remember, as we did in class, one interior angle of a regular polygon is equal to the sum of the interior angles divided by the number of interior angles. So remember that equation. You take the sum of the interior angles and then divide it by the total number of interior angles, and that will give you the measure of one of those interior angles. Remember how we did that over here, like for a, a triangle. So the sum is 180, there's three of them. So 180 divided by three would give us 60 degrees. Each of these angles in a regular triangle is 60 degrees. And in a regular quadrilateral, you take 360, the sum, and divide it by n, which is four, and